Drone Master Sal here, and today I'm doing a review of the Hubsan X4 501S H501S brushless drone. And this is kind of the review that I actually wish was out there when I started to fly the drone. I'm sort of a novice quadcopter pilot, I would say. I like to refer to myself as a drone master. I don't like the word quadcopter as much, to be honest, but I know that's like how you're technically supposed to refer to yourself as. But when I was first getting started, I didn't like a lot of the YouTube videos that were out there. They were more geared towards the techie crowd or people who have a very strong uh, grasp of the functionality of the thing, of the different terms, knowing what yaw is, knowing the different uh, voltage, like all these, like a tinkerer, someone who really loves to do that kind of stuff. And I'm not that kind of a hobbyist. I'm more of like a ready, fire, aim kind of guy. Like I like to fly it. I really enjoy the adrenaline rush of flying it. It fulfills my dreams of being a pilot that I had when I was younger. You know, I still kind of wish I was a pilot, like Maverick or something, but you know, that didn't happen. Uh, so this thing fulfills those dreams. So if you are one of those people in the audience who just like bought the thing, and you're like, hey, how do I get started? I don't want all the technical mumbo jumbo. I just want like someone normal out there to tell me how to do it. This is the video for you. So there are a few different things that you have here. And of course you can pack your case much more nicely than I have mine. I just kind of threw your stuff in here. But you have the actual quadcopter here. You have the charger have some of the propellers um, and the battery for the thing. This is uh, lasts about 25 minutes, I'd say, of fly time, maybe 20 minutes. Uh, I got some spare batteries for the remote, and I have the remote here. And that's pretty much all I have. I also have this uplink thing here if you want to download any updates for the actual software. I'm going to lay this out for you, and then we're going to go into uh, the different components here. All right, let's go through the various components. I got on my cool elk shirt here. Got this one recently, it's kind of dope, I like it. Um, the first thing I wanna talk about. Okay, so this is the actual drone. Mine is black here, as you can see. Some of the stuff that you're going to need to know. First of all, you need to, if you're in the United States, register this, with, I think it is the FAA. Um, so they're gonna give you this number, it's kind of like a serial number, and you just put it on your drone. You can put it either on the back of your drone. You could even put it inside of your drone. The main thing is that it's able to be seen uh, so that if someone, you know, if you crash the thing, they can look at it and they see who owns it. For me, I think it was about five, maybe $10 to get this registered. It's super easy to do. They have an online interface. I'll link to that down below so you can very quickly get registered and you can get flying. Um, the other thing here, you're gonna see, this is the bottom, you have, uh, a micro SD card. This is what's going to record all of the videos and the photos that you take. I think the one that I have, it's maybe it was like 30 bucks, something like that, 25 bucks. But uh, I have a, uh, you know, one that's going to basically uh, capture maybe 30 minutes of fly time. Since I'm only flying the thing for 25 minutes and I don't have another battery thus far, uh, I'm only going to capture a 25 minute video at most. So th that's what I have for my micro SD. And then on the back here, I'm gonna zoom in a bit in a second. You're gonna be able to see um, where the battery plugs in and what it looks like inside. All right, so you can see here the back of the drone. Basically, you have the battery right here. You just stick the thing in the back. Um, it, you know, it fits perfectly. You have two cables. Uh, this one is actually going to the charging device. Uh, so you're not gonna have to worry about that. This is the one that actually is going to turn the drone on. So I connect the red with the red and the black with the black and it turns on and that's how it works. Um, very simple, super easy to do. Uh, and I'll show you later how you can calibrate the actual quadcopter, but uh, that's what it is. And you just kind of stick the thing in and close it. And that's how the battery works. In terms of charging the battery, super simple. You have this one and you have this one. <laughs> Very technical terms here. You put this into the outlet, uh, sorry, you put this into the outlet, uh, you plug this in, and you just line up the uh, various red, white, and black cables with the ones on here. You just stick it in, and you wait for it to charge. 
I'll include some more specs about like charging time, all that kind of stuff. But pretty much, you just have to read this manual here, and it will give you all of that technical information that you need to know uh, in terms of in terms of actually charging the thing and all of the various specs. I really recommend reading this like three to four times. It's kind of technical. It's dense. It's a little hard to read. But uh, the sooner you get through this, the more you're going to understand how the drone actually works, and it's going to make the thing a lot easier when flying it. And then you can always reference this YouTube video when you're actually ready to go out there and fly. Another cable that I haven't used yet is this one, which plugs right into the left uh, side of the, the hub sand here. And basically this is used for updating the firmware and you can also update the remote controller uh, if new software comes out. I haven't done that this far, but if you wanna do that, you wanna get the latest and greatest software, you can go and do that uh, using that cable. I'm gonna show you really quickly how you can just put on the propellers for this thing. There is A, A, B, and B, and they correspond to the propellers here, and it shows you what the uh, little readings look like. So basically, you're just gonna, uh, I don't know how to say, screw this on, and you're gonna use this little wrench here to just make sure that it's uh, fastened on securely. You don't want to over tighten it, don't want to under tighten it, just make sure it's securely fastened and that way uh, the thing is not going to fly off and you're going to make sure that you have a much better flying experience obviously. The B then goes with the B, you spin it, it goes on, pretty easy. Make sure that it's securely fastened. Uh, same thing with this one. And there we go, we have the various propellers on should be ready to go once we calibrate it if we were in the field. Now, we're going to be flying this thing outside, obviously. We don't want any mishaps to happen indoors, but I want to show you what it's like um, to actually calibrate the thing indoors. You're just going to, we'll turn it around here, plug in the battery here, so I'll do that in just a second. It's going to light up. Yep. We're going to close this little chamber here, and now it's completely plugged in and working. We're then gonna turn on the remote and you're gonna have a screen pop up uh, like this. Got the lighting a little bit odd here. But it shows you, you can see what I look like. <laughs> Got the uh, camera there. Let's see if I can get it for you guys. The lighting is behind uh, the camera so it's a little bit harder to see. Oh, there we go. Got me on the camera here so you can see got all of my my materials here, etc. In the future, you can take a video using this or a camera, a, a, a photo here. But I wanna show you how to uh, navigate the actual uh, remote and some of the things that are on it. Okay, the first thing we see here happening, it says Calib Compass 1. So we need to calibrate Compass 1, Compass 2. So basically we have to turn the thing this way, clockwise, and it turns green. And now if you look at the remote, it should say Calib Compass 2. I don't know if that's showing up there. Let's see. Calib Compass 2. So the next one is uh, if you turn the drone facing downward, the nose is going down, and you turn it clockwise, this is calibrating the second compass within the drone. And now it's all calibrated. So now, technically, it would be ready to fly, but obviously we do not want to fly this thing indoors. I'll show you what the remote looks like. Okay, so you have a few different things here on the remote. The first thing you have, you notice, is the battery meter. This is the battery meter for the remote, this is not the battery meter for the quadcopter. The battery meter for the quadcopter or drone is right here. So that's on the left side. If you want, you can include labels up here so you can remember all of these different things. The other thing to really make sure is to look at the number of GPS signals that you have here or the number of uh, satellites that you have. We're inside so it doesn't pick up any GPS, but it. If you turn this down, it's not going to pick up any GPS. You turn this up, then it's uh, basically telling the remote that it's gonna to start to pick up the GPS signal. The other one, other uh, lever here is for return to home. You flip this up, if you have GPS signal, the quadcopter is gonna to turn to home and land safely. Another few things, 
This obviously turns the remote on and off. These are for trimming. I haven't used these terribly much. And then you have the left and the right joystick. Uh, and these have different settings depending on how you've set up your remote. On the right here, you have the video taking. So if I press this, it would start taking video. On the left here, if I press this, it would take a camera snapshot, which is kind of cool. If you're all the way high up, you can take snapshots with the drone. Okay, gonna fly the drone in just a second uh, in the Williamsburg waterfront sort of area. But before we do, I just wanna mention two things very quickly that have led to a crash of mine in the past. And by paying attention to these two things, keeping them forefront of your mind, you're gonna make sure that you fly the thing much more effectively the first time around. So the first thing is that less is more. Once you fly the thing and you're ascending, you get up to a certain altitude. It doesn't have to be that high, maybe six feet, maybe 12 feet. Um, stop touching the remote. There's a very big tendency to try to like pilot the thing, to try to move up and down and forward and left and right and like try to like stabilize it almost. You don't have to do any of that. If you have the GPS synced up, if you have a number of satellites, you're not going to have to do anything. You can just let go of the remote and it's gonna hover there in the air. I was a little bit like confused about that when I first started. I was trying to like pilot the thing, like go up and down, like move it around and to keep it like, I don't know, stabilized. I didn't have to do any of that. You just literally just let it there and it just floats. So if you ever are in a situation where you're a little bit uncomfortable or you don't know what to do, the best thing that you can do is to stop moving the joysticks on your remote. Just stop it, let it there, let it uh, hover there. If you do find that it's not hovering, that there's wind or something like that, then you might have to go to step number two, which I'm gonna talk about right now. So step number two is, when I was flying the thing for the first time around, I was a newbie, this is my first time, I spent most of my time and mental energy looking at the quadcopter in the air. I was gauging with my eyes where it was, I was gauging how high it was, I was then moving the joysticks while looking at the quadcopter. I haven't found that to be the best strategy to actually pilot the drone. The best way is to look at the drone until you get it to a certain altitude or a certain height. Then turn your focus from the drone to the little monitor or screen. Because your eyes can be extremely deceptive. I thought that I was gonna fly into the ground at certain points when I look at the monitor and it actually shows I'm a decent number of meters above the ground. It was just my eyes playing tricks on me based on the shadow, based on how far off the thing was, and that can create a sense of panic within you. It can create a sense of anxiety. And then you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? Oh my gosh, it looks like it's gonna fly into this thing. Look at the monitor. Take a, a calm breath. Uh, be aware of the emotions you're feeling and look at the monitor. And the monitor is gonna tell you how high it is. It's gonna show you on the screen where you're looking from. And then once you orient yourself with the monitor, you can then fly the thing back to you or you can fly it wherever you want. But you should primarily be focused with your eye on the monitor, in my opinion. You know, not everyone's gonna agree with me, but uh, that's why at a very early stage, I feel comfortable flying over the water. I feel comfortable flying in a lot of different places. It's because I look at the monitor and I am able to read the various dials and settings and stuff like that. Versus if I'm using my eye, it creates a lot of anxiety. It creates a lot of fear, creates a lot of uncertainty. Whereas when I look at this, I'm like, no, nah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Like, you know, there's no issue here. So look at the monitor if you are ever in doubt and don't look at the drone. There are gonna be a lot of people in the community who are gonna tell you how to fly. They're gonna tell you these things like, oh no, you're not doing it the right way. Or like, oh no, you should be doing this. Or look at my video online. You know, I had some people reach out to me about that. Like, you're so stupid. Why are you doing it this way? It's just ridiculous. Like, honestly, it is not rocket science. Anyone can fly one of these things. It's not terribly hard. And also, as long as you're being safe, as long as you are following the rule of law, you're not going to get in trouble. So don't pay attention to those people who are out there who are like sticklers for the rules or sticklers for technicality kind of stuff. Like I don't necessarily charge the battery 
always in the way that it should be charged. I don't always take care of the equipment in the way that it should necessarily. Sometimes I fly it over the water. I always tell, have people saying like, you know, it could fall into the water. Of course I know that. It's, it's, it's a risk that you take when you take on the hobby. And literally it's 300 bucks, like it's not a huge investment. That's why I like this drum. If it was like $2,000, I'd be far more fearful of doing those types of things. But with this one, it's like, no, like that's why I got it, is to do cool stuff with it. So don't pay attention to those people as much if you find people like hating on you or you find people trying to like call you out for different things like that.